Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first edition of Performing Resistance Dialogue, Dialogues on Art, Migration, Inclusive Cities. This is an international summer school, which is part of the international project Atlas of Transitions Biennale uh, 2020. It is promoted by Emilia Romagna Teatro Fondazione, Department of Sociology and Business Law of the University of Bologna and Cantieri Metici. It is a series of online talks, lectures, and dialogues featuring scholars, curators, and international artists. You can follow it on Facebook and YouTube every day until the 20th of June. Each talk lasts one hour. We will dialogue with our guests for the first 40 minutes, and then we will open to, the, to uh, your comments and questions. So please be happy part of it, write your questions, and we will try to collect them and respond as many as possible. Uh, I'm Francesca Guerisoli, I'm a contemporary art historian and critic, lecturer at uh, Milano Bicocca University in Italy, and I'm a curator of contemporary art, uh, working between uh, non-profit institutions and urban spaces. Uh, let me introduce our guest, Federica Mazzara, senior lecturer in intercultural communication at the University of Westminster in London. Hi, Federica. No. Hi, everyone. Uh, her research interrogates contemporary, contemporary concerns in Europe regarding multiculturalism, gender, and urban spaces as represented in cultural uh, practices. She has published articles in referred journals, chapters in books, and she has co-edited volumes and uh, special issues. Her latest monograph, entitled Reframing, Reframing Migration, Lampedusa from the Border Spectacle to the Aesthetics of Subversion was published last, last year by Peter Lang. The book uh, uh, explores the geographical, legal, and political framing of as asylum seekers and migrants through analysis of media representation, representation, policy papers, and art practices. She has co-curated an exhibition on the subject of migrant death at sea called Sink Without Trace that took place in June, July last year at the P21 Gallery in London. Uh, the exhibition focused on art being made uh, on the subject by artists who have, be, who have experienced forced migration personally. So, hi, uh, Federica. Um, hello. Uh, we both uh, deal with art happening uh, in special places plagued by conflict and uh, confinement. I dealt uh, with Mexico in my book, uh, Niuna Mas, art, art and Activism Against uh, Femicide. I deal with Mexico and you, in your book, deal with uh, Lampedusa. Uh, two places so far away and yet with several aspects in common despite the fact that in my research I talk about uh, femicide and not migration. Um, in both that, in this context, uh, there are associations and informal groups of people, activists, creatives, who deal with counter-narratives. There are artistic expressions that confront borders and their militarization, that activate a reversal of the institutional narrative that question the sensationalistic treatment of pain and uh, the trivialization of the cause from which they generate problems. Uh, the, um, the art that um, takes place in, in and because of this context exploits, uh, employs actions, objects, practices, video, etc., etc., to express the strategies of resistance against oppression and the erosion of collective memory. Um, art in such contexts aims at social change, hoping to figure um, an emotional reaction in the larger public to get informed, to investigate deeper, in order to transform the spectator into an aware actor, uh, capable of changing the world, as Jacques Rancière says. Critical art cannot and, and must not replace journalism. They are not antagonists, but both contribute to inform of, um, to the formulation of judgment critical sense and awareness. Uh, they, they both expose um, abuse and tear apart the mystification of truth. Um, 
So before going into the analysis of some artworks that can reframe the narrative of migration, I would ask you uh, something about the context that in your research uh, you base your uh, you base your research on the concept or the context of Lampedusa. Um, thank you, Federica. Yeah. Thank you so much, Francesca, and thanks uh, thanks to the organizer of Atlas, this International Summer School, for inviting me. This is really a pleasure, and I want to thank all the people who managed to um, to connect in the in us on YouTube, Facebook. Thank you so much. I hope you're all healthy and safe uh, wherever you are. Um, I agree with you, Francesca, about the overlapping of uh, um, of our of our research and the sort of common concerns and struggles. I absolutely agree with that. Um, in context, you want me to start from there, and rightly so. Um, I mean, of course, all I can say is that uh, I, I needed a focus in order to discuss about migration, about, um, and, and about the resistance um, against the hegemony narrative of migration. That was my main interest. And uh, I thought that Lampedusa, for obvious reasons, which also personal, um, considering I'm Sicilian, so I find it kind of um, um, sort of straightforward link to the uh, tiny island. Um, but I, um, I've been following, of course, what, what has happened in, in Lampedusa uh, for for the past decades. And uh, I recognize that, of course, uh, um, Lampedusa has been witnessing an incredible uh, crucial tension uh, between two sort of special dimensions. On the one hand, uh, we have this sort of desirable and idealized Mediterranean destination for leisure, for tourism, Pleasure. Uh, while on the other hand, for a deliberately, uh, deliberately political uh, decision, Lampedusa has been turned and morphed into this kind of um, landfall for a global passage of people who are bravely uh, escaping dangerous countries uh, in order to reach what they consider a safer, a safer place, meaning uh, Lampedusa, which means Italy, which means Europe. Um, and because Lampedusa has been turning to this kind of border escape, um, uh, but most importantly, has been turning to this sort of stage for a border spectacle uh, that has uh, strongly characterized the, um, the the approach to uh, to uh, the, the, uh, the the people on the move, the people who are trying to reach Europe um, uh, by unauthorized routes. Um, and uh, this uh, stage uh, is uh, the, the sort of border spectacle, to use a, a very important um, definition by Nicolas de Genova. Uh, this has been fueled by a narrative that is extremely toxic, uh, that is based on the idea that, of course, uh, migrants are invaders, uh, that it's, um, this is a crisis, which is a fabricated crisis, of course, and that is completely unmanageable. So um, so I was, uh, I was frustrated about this narrative. And uh, what, most importantly, I found that in Lampedusa, something was happening that uh, was in fact uh, going against this narrative so it was a lot it was really incredible to find out um, how many things were happening on the island uh, thanks for instance just to mention a few things uh, to the work of the local association called as causa uh, which, is, which is run by um, activists but also migrants as well and artists um, which has done incredible um, work in the in the context in the context of resisting and performing resistance against uh, the, 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 the toxic narrative, but also against the militarization, of course, because Lampedusa now has been witnessing an incredible enforcing of securitization that is having a huge impact on the people living there, uh, on the... On the um, of course, uh, if you think of the radar, for instance, there are now, I think now, five radar stations um, on the island, and uh, nobody talks about the electromagnetic pollution or the danger that all this um, will have on, on the animal and natural reserves of the island. So it's a really, really complicated space that deserves uh, attention. So that's why I thought of, of focusing on Lampedusa um, for, 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 for this sort of like um, important reason. And then you mentioned art. And of course, uh, given my background in, in cultural studies, visual culture, um, I was in need to uh, look for and find alternative narratives. And I found that actually uh, art can offer uh, an incredible alternative, um, alternative platform. Uh, so, so that's that's why um, I, I, I decided to, to explore uh, and I ended up concentrating on, on visual arts, which has also informed uh, my, um, my exhibition that you mentioned. So it is, uh, 
it, my interest was really um, about um, um, looking at those uh, um, attempts to subvert those practices um, uh, that I mentioned before by working on those gaps and fissures that are open up as sort of uh, instabilities uh, really uh, in, in such uh, toxic constructions. And I suggest in my book and in my recent research that this sort of resignifying process uh, can be found and must be found in the realm of aesthetics. So I hope that somehow clarify a little bit uh, the context that has informed my latest research. Yeah, thank you, Federica. Yeah. Uh, so I have my second questions for you. Um, how art well can provide counter narrative? It can reiterate stereotypes contributing to the spectacle of complex and painful issues such as uh, migration and that at sea. Therefore, the risk is uh, one, to confirm stere stereotypes, and two, to create aesthetic images of the tragedy. In both cases, I consider these toxic work, works, which not only are irrelevant for activating a citizenship discourse, but also they trivialize, they trivialize it, and in many cases, they Uh, by the other hand, there are transformative works able to take in root, root with us, within us, and activating what was a uh, state balancier. Uh, some put you in direct contact with that, but not with the, its representation. I'm thinking, for example, um, of artists I have worked with on other teams, such as uh, the Mexican artist Teresa Margoyes, who used bod bodily fluids to create a culture or elements of urban design uh, with which our bodies unknowingly come into contact and when we notice it, a shock reaction of course, uh, carried by the disgust we feel of connecting a body, uh, a dead body with ours. When I read your, books, your book, uh, the practice of Tamara Kametani linked me back to Margoya's practices. Both artists put the public in the direct contact with the object, with that, but without without making it uh, an anesthetic and uh, sorry an aesthetic object to contemplate. On the contrary, the object uh, triggers um, an emotional reaction in the public, which can also take place not not immediately. It may um, not correspond with the time to use the object itself, but be um, subsequent and uh, in another moment, for example, when you are uh, going back to home uh, uh, by bus, for example, when you are reading the guide to the show. Uh, but in your book, um, mm, both, sorry, both in your book and in the exhibition Sync Without Trace that you created last year, uh, you identify different good approaches and strategies that the artists have adopted uh, for the creation of a counter narrative uh, so not only tamara kametani but other different artists uh, you uh, spoke about uh, um, and different strategies and different um, uh, practices uh, so uh, if you like to to start with uh, um, tamara kametani to uh, explain yeah. um, yeah. artwork and other works uh, taken from uh, uh, the exhibition. Yes, yes, thank, thank you, Francesca. I just want to double check that the audio issues are now solved. Uh, can anyone confirm? Because I've read some comments of people complaining about the audio. Is he okay now? Hope so. Um, yes, absolutely, I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you, Francesca, about, of course, the, uh, the potential of art. Uh, of course, not all art producers around issues uh, such as migration are, um, are uh, have an impact or the, the impact that is at least that I am expecting from works of art around migration. But the idea here is that uh, some forms of artistic expression, I think, have a potential which is completely unavailable to governmental or mass media discourse, which is um, and I'd like to quote Mike Bal here, uh, to open up the possible visibility of situations, issues, events, and people, 
and to leave it to its viewers or readers to enact the visibility, which is a little bit like to answer uh, that call by seeing. So there is a sort of interactive element in, in, this, uh, um, in this way we uh, consume the artwork. Um, and some artistic engagements are in fact um, developing increasingly more spaces for subversive practices that may help us uh, rethink uh, the Mediterranean and the issue of migration. So it is about um, redistributing the common sense, as Jacques Rancière um, would, would probably say. So it's, a, it's about making visible and audible what is normally invisible and inaudible. So to question the sort of self-evidence of the visible or uh, to break um, to break up the given relations between things and meanings, um, and also to invent new relationships between things um, as they are and as they appear. So I like um, to think um, about the process of revelation that Rancière talks about um, when it comes to art that has a potential. And he says, uh, it's, it's like this process of revelation follows a kind of three steps. The first step when you're in front of the artwork is this production of a sensory form of strangeness. You feel like a, a little bit alienated. The second step is the development of a, of a certain kind of awareness. So you become awareness of the reasons of that strangeness. And then finally, uh, what should happen uh, is a mobilization of individuals as a result of that awareness. So you take action, you sort of engage with that, with that emotion. Um, so it's not really a politics of, of sentimentalism, it's not really about triggering compassion and pity, it's something that must go beyond. Now you mentioned Tamara uh, Kametani and uh, I'm glad you did that. I would like the PowerPoint to be shared please so we can actually show the image of the artwork that I will talk about now. Uh, Tamara is, a, is a, a Slovak artist with a base in London. She is one of the artists who has critically addressed the current phenomenon of migration from the southern shore of the Mediterranean towards the north. And a more contribution, there is this uh, a very, very interesting um, uh, artwork called The Sea Stay Calm for 108 Miles, um, which um, is basically a bench, is made uh, of, of a bench. And the bench is made out of wooden planks that she has collected in Lampedusa from the dilapidated and discarded migrant boats uh, in, in the landfill where, where they were at some point stored uh, before being destroyed. Um, and she creates this very, apparently very simple Polish bench. These, these works acquire a powerful meaning thanks to the interesting context in which the artist places it, which is, and this is the next slide, is a, is a room surrounded by, um, sorry, let me get that. Mm. So you see now. So this um, this is the context um, of the um, of the of the artwork. Uh, so it is a room um, surrounded by Google Earth images of the Mediterranean Sea, and more specifically, uh, she is uh, um, um, basically. Uh, taking the area between the coast of Libya and Lampedusa. And she projects these images onto walls uh, with also an audio recording of that very scene in the background. Um, now, uh, it's interesting, upon entering the dark room uh, through this uh, sort of heavy, heavy curtain, the viewer is offered um, an explanatory leaflet. And as you say before, you might read it, you might not. You never know how the, how, um, the viewer uh, interacts with the, with the artworks. And the text informs the viewer about the fact that the Google Earth system um, so how, how the Google Earth system uh, detect landmass, uh, but fails to map the sea. That's interesting. So instead of the actual sea, what Google Earth generates is, a, is a basically a computer-generated animation that is inserted in place of seas and oceans. Um, so as Kamitani informs us, here the sea is always calm. So there are ways infinitely moving in a sort of soft breeze, devoid of any landmarks or, or maritime traffic. Uh, 
is a sort of simulacrum based on projection rather than veracity. And we go back to Ranciere and this idea that art can actually challenge uh, the, uh, the relationship between uh, what, is, uh, what is visible, what is invisible, what is real, and uh, what is surreal. Uh, so the Google Earth version of the sea clearly conceals the bias, the violence of the liquid borders, and uh, Kamitani is addressing this lack of political commitment by placing within an, an apparently the police side and, and an historical context a bench that is there with its simplicity to subvert the spectatorship, because that bench is made out of wood taken from the, the boats that have been used by people um, um, on the move to, to reach Europe uh, via unauthorized routes because of European policies. So, so the, you, you, the visitors are basically expected to uh, repose on the bench and absorb this sort of fake and uncanny uh, calmness of, of the sea, uh, which is actually a highly deadly sea, as we know. I mean, people are, are dying every day uh, in, in that sea. So you can see how the bench clearly plays a specific role here. Um, and, and that was just to, um, to, give, a, to, to give an example. Uh, and in terms of death at sea, I mean, this, we, we, we couldn't um, include this work uh, um, in our exhibition uh, for, for space reasons, simply. We didn't have a room that could accommodate this artwork. So we had another artwork by Tamara as part of Sink Without Trace. So Sink Without Trace, as you mentioned before, is an exhibition I co-curated with London-based artist Maya Ramsey um, at the P21 Gallery in London last year. Um, and these exhibition uh, focus specifically on migrant death at sea. Um, and most importantly, it is informed by concept of resistance and struggle more than anything else. Uh, so there is not an intention in this exhibition to reduce this death to a matter of, of mere bodies or corpses. Um, which is something they characterize strongly, for instance, the um, the political uh, aesthetic discourse of, of, uh, of the necropolitics that we are all used to um, in the media or in governmental discourse. So the intention of this exhibition, I hope I'll, I'll, I'll give you a sense by giving you some of the examples of the artworks that we included. The, the, the intention was to trigger different emotional responses. So not simply um, compassion and pity, which could be, of course, a way to respond to, to the artworks, uh, but um, we, we, we really expected more, and, and this actually happened. So we expected emotions such as frustration, anger, amazement, incredulity, wonder, confusion, disbelief, uh, all emotion that could eventually lead to a sort of different um, and more comprehensive understanding of the issue in question. So again, to go back to the process of revelation by Rancière that I, that I mm, mentioned before, um, the idea is to, was to uh, um, ask the, 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 the viewer to feel the sort of sense of um, alienation, uh, then to make sense of the alienation and um, campaign for change. Uh, that's why, for instance, we uh, collected money for a lump form uh, by selling the catalogs of the exhibition. And for those who don't know, a lump form is a hotline run by uh, by uh, um, volunteer um, volunteers all around the world, which is and with, with the, the, the main uh, goal of this uh, incredible organization is to uh, facilitate the rescue operation um, of people in distress uh, in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and uh, and this again, I mean, it, it took a long time, and you know, we, we needed to talk to the people coming to the exhibition uh, right after they, they might have been in distress, really sad. Some of them really could not uh, even talk uh, about, about their their experience of, of, of having to go through these uh, pretty powerful artworks. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that they would learn also about alarm phone and what, what's, what's, uh, what they could do to support the, to support the, uh, the organization. So it is um, 
for most um for the most part it is not death itself that is the focus but mainly the systematic factors that do not uh, or do or not make such death grievable right the, the issue of grievability uh, is uh, absolutely crucial here because within the frame of vulnerability victims or shipwrecks uh, of an authorized journey can be said to fall under uh, the category of ungrievable lives, to use, of course, Judith Butler's uh, term, which refers, as you know, to lives that cannot be lost, cannot be destroyed because they already inhabit uh, a lost and destroyed zone. So they are ontologically and from the start already uh, lost and destroyed. So, um, and if you consider, for instance, the, um, the strategy of burial of recovering uh, of the bodies that are adopted in places that receive the corpses of, of uh, shipwrecked victims. Uh, all these, again, they violate the fact that grieving the migrant uh, lost lives is not a recognizable and respected practice, which is an issue that was pretty crucial um, and, and very much addressed in our exhibition. Um, so uh, it was really a way to perform resistance against the necropolitics uh, uh, that characterized the uh, European approach uh, to uh, migrant death at sea. So another example I can give you. Uh, so this is the um, this is the posture of um, of our exhibition with the list of artists. You can still uh, um, uh, visit the uh, the website at www.singwithouttrace.com and. Uh, you can read about the press um, coverage, you can read about the artist, you can see some images, so uh, you can engage with the, uh, with the exhibition uh, and, and learn about it more. So another example um, I would like to make reference is uh, this example by Maya Ramsey. Uh, this is this is called um, Countless, and it's comprised of 30 graphite rubbings from the graves of uh, unnamed migrants who lost their lives in the Sicilian Channel. And the grave uh, rubbings are on tissue paper framed in um, perspex, um, as if to almost emulate a dignified marble headstone that sadly uh, so few of them have. Um, so the rubbings are um, exhibited alongside some photographic image that I will um, show you. This is um, how they how they look like, um, and these rubbings are meant to critically address uh, the approximation of data that is used to identify the victims, which is ultimately a proof that vulnerability uh, is differently distributed. Uh, these people are not even considered vulnerable. Uh, migrant lives are not recognized as um, lives deserving to be grieved, and these features pretty much show the point. Um, so, so, in a way, the point of this work by my Ramsey is to try to bring the migrants' grave, graves closer to people. Uh, we will not ever see them, for instance, because these are not kind of images that we consume on a daily basis uh, on, on news or on main, mainstream uh, media. So it's about bringing the subject closer and, again, sort of uh, create a sense of um, strangeness that, and, and about which you need to make sense of. Uh, and as you mentioned before, what, uh, what strongly characterized this exhibition was the presence of artists with refugee background. For us, it was absolutely crucial uh, that uh, artists who had experienced, uh, some of them personally experienced the sea uh, crossing by unauthorized routes, uh, could, could, be, um, could be there, uh, should be there. Um, and uh, there, there was, for instance, uh, uh, the... Um, the beautiful uh, video about Dagmawi Ime, who is an Ethiopian uh, refugee. Um, sorry, I just got back. Um, I, I know I, we are running out of time. Um, can you see? Yes. So, for instance, Asmet is a, a, a video uh, by the Ethiopian refugee filmmaker uh, Dagmawi Ime. 
who um, founded the Rome, also is, is also part of this archive of migrant memory, a very important organization based in Rome. Uh, this video, uh, which uh, you find available on YouTube in two languages, was made uh, on uh, the occasion of the first anniversary of the uh, loss of 368 lives uh, for um, on the 3rd of October 2013 shipwreck. Um, and it, it, it's a sort of like, um, way to commemorate not simply uh, the, uh, the the number uh, but the names so is uh, is there um uh, the intention of this of this video that that lists the all 368 names of the people involved in the shipwreck um is really about challenging the very um the very toxic way of um, identifying these people, like right? relying on, on 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 empty numbers rather than uh, names, which also have an incredible uh, and powerful meaning, as the video shows. Um, and I don't know if I should stop here, uh, Francesca. You tell me because I'm not really keeping track of the time. Maybe, maybe we must stop uh, here, and we. Yeah. I, I, I have and we have the last question. Um, yeah. yeah. And, yes, and the last question. question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so, can you hear? Hear? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Let's go back to the theme that intro that introduced the previous question. Uh, name, yeah, name the risk that artists take in forming stereotypes and creating creating aesthetical images of the tragedy. Several well-known artists have received uh, numerous sens sensational criticisms uh, for their works on the subject of migration. Uh, last year, you exhibited the work of a, photo, of a photographer. I can't hear you, Francesca. In the history of the, the Mediterranean Sea. The migrants were almost all locked inside the, the hold and uh, the engine, engine room. And when the boat mm, uh, collided with the Portuguese mer merchant ship that was trying to res rescue them, it sank, uh, taking between um, 700 and, and 1,100 um, missing people to, to, the, abyss, to the abysses. Uh, the wreckage was later recovered in, the, in June uh, 2017 by the Italian Navy and uh, it began um, the extraction and identification of the bodies. The wreckage itself became a symbol of the migration scandal. Uh, Christophe um, to the Biennale titled it Barca Nostra, defining it as a as a collective and commemorative monument uh, to contemporary migration. Um, you told me uh, uh, how the exhibition that you created, Sync Without Trace, had, um, had a great media coverage also in relation to that same boat uh, present in the exhibition uh, through photographs made by Max Hirzel uh, that you've shown in your exhibition. Uh, so can you tell us uh, uh, what was about uh, Max Hirzel artwork or uh, uh, photographs, um, the context made that photographs uh, are as an artwork, so we can uh, speak about an artwork. And um, can you tell us uh, um, about uh, his work? And what is, from your point of view, um, is, the, is the gap between the two works by, so the work by, uh, made by Max Hirzel and the work by, made by um, Christoph uh, uh, Buchel. Um, 
and the two approaches. So not only the two um, a, a confront be between the, the two artworks, but the, the two approaches that um, often we can find uh, when we um, try to, um, to to look at when, when we uh, approach uh, artworks from um, yeah. Yeah. the diagram. Yes, thanks. Thank you for bringing this into the discussion. Um, because it's a, this is a typical example, I think, of a, of, of a very different approach uh, to uh, the same issue. Uh, one that has become uh, basically another um, platform for spectacularizing uh, the, uh, the death of, uh, um, of the others. And another one that has tried to uh, really work out a way uh, to, to resist the narrative, uh, as I think Matisse has managed to do with this uh, um, very powerful uh, journalistic uh, photo um, reportage. Uh, so uh, it, it's quite interesting that actually the two things somehow overlap. So Mai and I, we were working on the on the exhibition. It was the month before, basically, of the opening that we realized that um, that we learned about the installation by Buchele, the Biennale uh, of, of the of, the, of this of this boat, which he named Barca Nostra, while it was actually uh, named uh, after after the um, recovering, it was named the Boat of Innocence. As you said before, uh, these um, this boat was recovered an hour, a year after actually the actual shipwreck uh, um, uh, in two thousand and fifteen. Um, <clears throat> and when it was uh, recovered, uh, the the, the, the they found out that 458 corpses or remains of corpses were still trapped in the hull of the, of the boat. So you can imagine uh, the, the sort of macabre story that this boat um, is bringing with it. And uh, um, what uh, migrant migrant um, bodies, uh, that's the, the name of the project by Mark Tietze. Actually, if the PowerPoint can be shared again, that would be great because I have a few pictures. Um, from that, from that work. So what, what this work focuses on um, is, is, the, is on the rare, rare occasion when the Italian government salvaged the, uh, the migrant ship, right? Um, and, and, and the, which is in fact a really rare um, um, occurrence in the sense that not, um, forensic investigation are not carried out every time there is a, there is a ship, right? Um, so the uh, Max Hitzel, as a journalist, uh, as a photojournalist, he was allowed to uh, to um, uh, to the NATO um, base uh, in Melilli uh, to follow and document these uh, these incredible um, forensic investigation. Uh, as the PowerPoint be um, shared again. Uh, is there a problem? Yes. So. Can you see it? It doesn't look like. Yes. So these are some of the images of the um, photo uh, reportage. So the, um, the project um, it's important because he, he makes um, a reference and uh, he, uh, he makes visible something that is usually absolutely invisible, right? We don't know really what happens uh, to the corpses of migrants which are recovered, uh, if they are recovered um, at sea. And um, so the, 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 the important uh, role that these uh, photo um, reportage plays is, uh, of course, about documenting this unprecedented operation. Uh, but there is also uh, something else that happens in this project, project that goes uh, uh, definitely beyond simple documentation of the forensics. Uh, the project, for instance, also uncovers the story of some of those uh, involved. So, for instance, uh, what the Max Hitzel does um, is to go to Senegal and visit uh, the family uh, of a supposed victim of the same of the same shipwreck whose body has never been uh, recovered. And um, so it decides to go to Senegal to meet the family and uh, to um, to document these uh, uh, their, their the struggle. Uh, 
because it's important uh, to, um, to, to, to sort of make visible what kind of struggle the families of these people who die at sea, uh, or whose bodies never recover, what they need to do, what, what, what they have to cope with. The lack of a body means the impossibility of grieving and mourning uh, that person. Um, and another thing that ITU uh, project uh, does is to show also how the management of migrant deaths, death has also kind of generated a, a very disturbing uh, dynamic business. So, for instance, uh, there are jobs now, people have as a job uh, to build uh, metallic coffins or, or to pile uh, um, uh, coffins uh, made for people who uh, lose their life at sea. Uh, and it's like, uh, again, another incredible narrative that has been normalized. It's, become, it's becoming normal, right, that we need to recover uh, the corpses of people who die at sea because that's how it is. And of course, by revealing this, I guess, the process of revelation, uh, you are sort of faced with, with these uh, very, very paradoxical uh, reality, right? You never think about that, but then you stop and you look at these images and you say like, oh my God, look at this, this is really, uh, this is really disturbing. Uh, so you, you, you might actually start thinking about the whole issue in a, in a slightly different way. So what Buchel's installation does, uh, it's uh, to uh, reduce um, the, the, the whole story behind it this, uh, this boat, which is very complicated, as I mentioned before, to a sort of mausoleum, it's a sort of like commemorative um, um, object uh, that um, doesn't doesn't lead to anything, rather than you know just simply a sensational and again another sort of form of spectacularization of uh, uh, the, the 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 death at sea of, of, of the loss of people. Uh, also, we need to consider that Buchel spent uh, millions, uh, a lot of money. So there are also sorts of ethical issues that should be taken into account when we discuss uh, Buchel's installation at the Venice Biennale. Uh, what was the purpose of moving you know, this, this massive um, boat uh, to the Venice Biennale? Uh, questions that he has never answered. He has always refused to, uh, to engage in the discussion or um, to be interviewed about this. Also a very unfortunate location uh, for, for, for this installation and the Arsenal, which is a harbor itself, is like, a, is this a work of art? Is he not? Is he a no boat? Um, and then it was near a cafe, the only wireless point of the Biennale. Um, so it was really hard to identify it as a work of art. You, were, you went there, Francesca, and you told me that you actually saw a caption, there was a caption, but I've read several other um, posts on Twitter and on other social um, media saying that I couldn't find a caption, which is problematic. I mean, I'm sure there was because you, you show me the picture and I'm not, uh, um, of course, um, saying um, the contrary. However, if other people have found it difficult to find a caption that could explain the context of the book, I find it problematic. So it must have not been completely clear. Um, so what, these, uh, what does Buchel's installation do is, is to limit itself um, to an act of commemoration, which I don't think is what we need. I mean, this is not like a, something that happened in the past that we need to commemorate and remember um, uh, to avoid the same mistake. I mean, we are making the same mistake on a daily basis. This is something that belongs to our present. We're all part of it. Um, so we really don't need this kind of, to trigger this kind of, of emotions, which we've all around compassion, around pity. Um, we need other forms of, um, of, of emotions uh, to be triggered um, that definitely um, do not uh, play along this uh, sensationalism and spectacularization. And this is what I really like of Ezel's approach to this very, very delicate, delicate issue. I hope I've answered your question, Francesca. Maybe we can open Hello? Francesca, can you hear me? Uh, 
Francesca, I think Francesca is experiencing some Hello? issue with connection. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I have a problem with my connection because there's a... a <laughs> With a window open, maybe it's better. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, uh, thank you for your answer because uh, yeah, th there were th th that artwork by um, the art this Swiss art uh, um, um, there was a complexity around the, that artwork and there, there re it received many critics uh, because yeah you know uh, um, we we look it looks looks like uh, uh, another time uh, it, it deal with the spectacularization of uh, um, an image and so uh, I think uh, we we must come back to Ranciere ask, asking uh, uh, what what um how can art uh, make us uh, uh, more uh, conscious more uh, active how can how can we become active uh, through art so um uh, what if art can be very uh, critic and and um, can um make us uh, um active and to construct to, to reconstruct a narrative and uh, what um, the reality and uh, uh, how can we um, manage with reality in a way that is different from um, the, 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 the uh, media, mass media strategy and narratives. So um, don't, I, 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 I don't want to express myself about uh, um, uh, Barca Nostra uh, because uh, it's difficult to, I think it's it's a very difficult to to give a, 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 an idea, a, a fixed idea about uh, uh, an artwork that um, um, like that one. But um, yeah, uh, as I told you uh, in questions, um, uh, I I think that other kind of artworks can. Uh, um, can make us uh, much more active and beca become active um, in, a, in a way to change uh, the, the, the course of the events. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, uh, we are a bit late and uh, we received some uh, questions and um, sure. So, for example, from Tunisia, Hand mm -hmm. Mansour ask, uh, uh, do you think art can successfully escape ideology uh, in its most general meaning and provide some transcultural representation understanding of human crisis? Uh, well, that's, that's what I'm trying to explore, right? So, of course, um, I, I believe that any artist who is um, engaged with issue of migration um, has some sort of um, political engagement, ideological engagement to a certain extent as well. Um, it's sort of inevitable in a way. Um, you need to uh, become critical of the situation to understand as well the context, which is not exactly um, a straightforward and easy thing to do. Uh, so these are artists uh, that are uh, spending a lot of time trying to figure out um, what is going on. Uh, they are artists who are also experiencing themselves the, 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 the trouble of being a person uh, on the move uh, and not being accepted. Uh, so it's really, I think it's very difficult to uh, sort of disconnect uh, your um, artistic uh, act uh, from, um, for instance, a political, um, a pol political engagement. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yes. But it's something that um, I think there was a reference to the second part of the question, um, a universal or trans, transcultural. 
Yeah. I can't hear you very well, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Now I can. Okay. But, um, yeah. I can I can uh, ask you another question. Yes, maybe slowly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, from uh, Sara, the experience of dead people, num numbers without names, uh, without burial ceremony during the COVID-19 uh, crisis, as similarities with dead people as numbers among at sea. Do you believe that art can can or should uh, create ceremonies, installations, texts, and uh, that make this similarity more, university, more universal? Do you know any artists who are dealing with this? Um, at the moment, I'm not aware of uh, there. There is plenty of, of art uh, I know that has been uh, done. I, I can't give you names, but there is already uh, quite a lot of engagement with the issue of the death caused by COVID-19. Um, and again, I think what is important here is, uh, of course, that art can do a lot, as I as I hope I showed in my in my previous argument. Uh, but what is important is that art is able to sort of generate a sort of critical mourning, not just uh, um, um, something that um, um, makes makes us feel like sorry uh, for what is happening uh, without really connecting, uh, for instance, with the causes and, and the reasons of these uh, of these uh, loss. So I believe that this can definitely be uh, applied to this uh, uh, new crisis. Um, which is definitely universal because we uh, we have all been affected. So there will be more um, definitely um, um, shared platforms here, uh, and I'm sure that art will uh, will produce and is still is already uh, producing um, and a lot of um, responses uh, to this. Um, and again, what I what I hope for is uh, an art that. Uh, again, follows the process of revelation that Rancia talks about. So uh, doesn't simply uh, trigger uh, emotions that are gone the moment after uh, we have, you know, left the artwork. Um, but it's something that might trigger uh, action and, uh, and and criticism, like a critical view, a critical mourning. So we need to, I think we need to be careful with this idea of commemoration. What do we really mean by commemoration. Maybe we need to really challenge uh, and uh, and rediscuss the whole idea of commemoration. What is exactly commemoration? Um, especially if something is done in a moment that is still, you know, is still ongoing and, and is not necessarily uh, celebrating something of the past. Uh, but what, what is it? Um, that's what we should, we should discuss, really. What is? What does it mean to commemorate? Mm -hmm. Okay, from uh, Francesco, uh, from Greece, uh, do you think that political and ideological, and do you think that art in itself can be, sorry, can be a communitarian and participatory, participatory co-creation process? Absolutely, yes, it is already uh, an incredible communitarian participatory um, platform. I mean, I'm an academic and I'm not an artist, uh, but I'm fully engaged with uh, what artists are doing uh, in um, in this context. And I know that uh, people on the move have been uh, involved in several artistic projects. They are themselves coming with the artistic background and they found on uh, in art uh, an incredible, valuable uh, tool and and um, and medium to express their, their own their own frustration, their own struggle. Uh, so absolutely, I'm all completely up for, uh, for for this kind of, of, of way of framing art within the context of migration. Then, Melissa, uh, through which modalities it is possible to overcome the temporariness that characterizes some of the artistic intervention you have encountered in your research? So I'm not sure I got the question. Yeah, um, she's she's asking. Uh, yeah, I uh, another time. Uh, through which modalities it is possible to overcome the temporariness 
characterized some of the artistic interventions you have encountered in your research. Melissa, if you can explain uh, your yeah, question. I'm not sure I completely uh, understand the question. Yeah, okay. Um, Contemporary culture, somebody just uh, it's probably um, related to the fact that maybe when an exhibition is over, uh, the, 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 the impact of that potential artwork uh, is this probably the Melissa you are referring to? Uh, I can, uh, can give you another question. Uh, the last question from uh, from Brazil, Jonathan. I would like to ask uh, about the political side of art. How do you think that art installations can leave traditional spaces and gain public spaces and involve more people? That's a crucial question, of course, uh, and thanks for raising this point. I mean, uh, the, the, the tendency is, of course, to see art as something that is limited, of course, to galleries, museums, uh, and therefore um, it's, um, it's just um, uh, basically the, uh, engaging with the converted, with people uh, who might not read enough about this and who might share the, the ideology and the political side of, of the artist. Um, and I, I recognize this is an, a, a very uh, a crucial uh, challenge uh, for, for the art realm. Uh, but I, I'm also witnessing a lot of um, um, different kind of engagement with public spaces. Um, so many of these uh, uh, installations I have discussed, I know that they have been also installed in public spaces, which could be uh, stations, uh, squares, uh, where of course the engagement with the, uh, with the random public is uh, uh, is uh, facilitated in the case of our exhibition for instance uh, we uh, during refugee week uh, that happens every year in june in uk uh, we uh, also included an installation in a public space in london uh, nearby granham square king's cross uh, the king's cross station uh, which is a an art project by artist Lucy Woods, uh, who, um, uh, who uh, back in 2012, she got a, um, she acquired a, a boat. She managed to convince uh, the the Coast Guard in Lampedusa to uh, give her a boat, um, and uh, and uh, that was used by uh, by some Tunisian travelers, uh, a fishing boat. And what she did was to uh, use that little boat. Uh, to reach L London uh, from Lampedusa um, sailing. So it was like um, a, a solo sailing uh, of thousands of miles uh, that took her to Lampedusa, sorry, to London. So she did a sort of reverse travel from um, Lampedusa to London. Uh, the, um, or actually it's the travel that migrants would like to do uh, um, to reach the north, northern Europe, right? So she's she, she took the boat um, from the south to the north um, as a sort of ideal destination. Uh, and this was uh, in order to uh, raise awareness, especially um, uh, for, for northern Europeans, uh, to raise awareness about the struggle of these migrants, the way they travel. So it was like to show them what is, uh, how does a fishing boat look like, right? So we used to see uh, remains of fishing boats uh, in, the, in the media sometimes, not, not even always. Uh, but how does it look like? And it was quite incredible to see the reaction of people. Uh, I actually have an image. If the PowerPoint can be shared, I can show you an image of the installation as it happened uh, last year in June. Um, yes, do you have it with you? Yes. So this is, um, this is the project I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, and um, you can see on the right side, the, the, this is the, the granary, uh, granary Square, these are called the Green Steps, uh, which are commonly, and on sunny days, really, really crowded. There are other pictures that really shows uh, a lot of people sitting on the steps and looking at this little boat. You can see how tiny it is. 36 people travel on this fishing boat across the Mediterranean um, and to reach Lampedusa from Tunisia. Um, uh, 
and what is interesting is that Lucy Wood, who you can see on the on the left uh, picture, uh, the person standing, uh, she was there. The artist was there. She was engaging with people, um, answering questions uh, about uh, about the project. Um, and also, interestingly, she kept all the objects she found on the boat. She kept as they were. Uh, so there were package uh, of, of pasta. There were clothes. So there were absolutely everything that was left in the boat. She kept she kept it there. So um, she she sort of uh, wanted to use this board as a kind of like floating museum. So in order to um, to show uh, really what um, what might mean to to travel uh, in a place um, in a space like this, so many people um, sharing the space. And we have had a, a mix of, of reaction. There were some people who were completely, you know, sort of amazed and, and shocked, and they couldn't believe that how tiny the boat was. They're like, "Yeah, I've always heard about this fishing boat, but I had no idea about the size. This is really tiny." Um, and then there are other people uh, being more threatening and uh, and of course um, attacking the artist and say, uh, "You shouldn't be here. Or they should all drown." You know, this is a uh, we don't want this here in the region canal uh why are you here so that tells that there is a potential of course for um for art to uh, to actually um uh, being um presented in, in spaces which are not the the, the most straightforward uh, spaces which i i agree uh, can limit somehow the message to um to people who might be already sort of converted or um, might not already a lot and 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 that for the potential of uh, impacting uh, the understanding uh, um, it's uh, more limited i hope this sort of example um help to um clarify my point yeah yeah i think so thank you federica i think our time is <laughs> finish um so uh, sorry because there were other questions in the answer um but thank you federic um thank you, thank you for, uh, i'm sorry if, if i couldn't hear well um at some point i'm very Melissa. sorry about this connection um issues uh, but thank you so much. Thank you to Atlas and the people involved and to all uh, those who um, have been with us for the past hour. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.